<coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we're going to continue with our syllabus uh, in research methodology. Uh, the topic for today is uh, role of statistics in research. So why we need to do a statistical analysis? Because statistical analysis deal with the data collection, analysis and interpretation of data to solve problem. Statistical analysis also needed to describe and understand the variability. It is, is uh, the process of uh, analysis is making sense of the information. Statistical analysis may range from a simple frequency table for, uh, to a very complex multivariate analysis, such as state speed modeling for time series data or structure, structural equation modeling for multivariate and data. So why do we need statistics? It's a virtually all real world process as a bit variability which is the result of change in the underlying condition. In most applications, it is not possible to study the whole population. So the element of uncertainty, which is a probability, is thus presented. So means that we're going to take a sample out of population to measure to, to, to describe the, the current population. Uh, is the descriptive and uh, influential statistics provide evidence to support an opinion or judgment? Right? So this is based on Robert Hayden. Right? So strategy for data analysis. So if uh, as we know, previously we already learned we have a qualitative data and quantitative data, right? For a quantitative data, if you have a discrete, if you are doing descriptive statistics or charting, so you're going to make uh, make use of mean, median, variance, graph, and many more, right? If for a qualitative data, you're going to make use of percentage, mode, median, chart, and table. There are no measure for variation for a qualitative data. Right. For quality data, uh, qualitative data such as a categorical data with a nominal and ordinal scale. So if you are measuring association, so for qualitative data, you are construct first you are going to construct a cross tabulation table, right? And then do a non-parametric measures of association such as a Pearson product uh, Pearson chi square analysis or Fisher exact analysis or McNema Cochrane Q and so on. Right, for uh, quantitative uh, data, so going to do a correlation analysis. For hypothesis uh, testing or modeling, right? Uh, so for qualitative data, most of the time we are doing uh, using a non-parametric method. For quantitative data, we are using a parametric method. So the difference between parametric method and non-parametric method is uh, a parametric method always uh, assume a normality distribution where the normality distribution only can be measured on a quantitative data right for qualitative data we cannot measure the uh, normality distribution right <coughs> so uh, as we know uh, from a previous uh, chapter statistical analysis uh, can be divided into two types First is a descriptive uh, statistical analysis. Another one is inferential statistical analysis. So for a descriptive statistical analysis, it used to describe the basic features of the data obtained by the study lah, uh, by using table, chart or graph. Right? It just we want to describe the features or characteristic of the data. For inferential statistics, it combines the method of descriptive statistics with the theoretical of probability for purpose of learning what sample of data tell us about the characteristic of the population. Right. So we want to make use the data from a, uh, a sample data to make inference to the population. So that that's why we call it as a inferential statistics. So, as we learned before, uh, under type of variable, we have a scale of measurement, right? For a quantitative data, so we have interval and ratio scale of measurement. 
for a qualitative data, we have nominal and ordinal scale of data. So as we know, nominal and ordinal is a qualitative data, it's a categorical data. Right? The difference between nominal and ordinal is ordinal we can we can rank the uh, level right <clears throat> so type of descriptive analysis for a nominal scale if you have two category or more than two categories normally we are using frequency table or cross tabulation table with a category proportion and mode right mode means uh, the frequency lah. so for um, ordinal uh, scale of measurement normally we are measuring median and mode and sometimes if you want to put some variability we are using interquarter range uh, for interval and ratio uh, we are for our descriptive statistics normally we are using arithmetic mean variance skewness cortices and index number so under inferential statistics so just now we are looking into descriptive statistics for inferential statistics, we have two types of inferential statistics, enumerative and analytical. Enumerative means that we're going to do estimation, hypothesis, analysis of variance, non-parametric method, and regression analysis. And then, uh, of course, we need to ac accompany with uh, some descriptive statistics, charts, and graph. For analytical uh, inf type of inferential statistics, uh, there are index number, time series analysis, business forecasting, uh, quality control chart. Right? This is a for some of example for analytical uh, inferential statistics. So what is the difference between enumeric, enumerative and analytic studies? Enumerative means that uh, we to derive a conclusion based on the random sample taken from the existing, time, existing finite and well-defined population. Right. For analytics means that observe current process with goal of making prediction about or improving a future process. Means that we're not getting any sample from the analytic of uh, inferential statistics. For enumerative uh, inferential statistics, uh, we are making conclusion based on sample. Right. So, example of statistical inference: How much uh, does a household spend on house mortgage? Right. So, from a population of ten million house owner, we take a sample uh, of one thousand house owner. So, this is a example of statistical inference. So, where we measure, we we measure a statistical inference. We measure the statistical inference on the sample. How likely it is average spending on house mortgage more than 30%. So, so we measure this uh, uh, at the sample uh, area stage and we make a conclusion on the population stage. So, uh, another thing that we need to understand under hypothesis testing is a type uh, error. And this is a classification table so under classification table we have a research finding our finding and our sorry this is a prediction and finding right so if the null is true and we found that sorry uh, for if the prediction is true and we found that uh, Null is also true, so we are making a correct decision. If uh, the prediction is false, we found that it's true, so we are making a type 2 error. Uh, type 1 error means that when we accept null hypothesis, when null hypothesis is false, right? So this is a type 1 error, right? So type 1 error normally uh, symbol by alpha. This is the the measurement that the benchmark or threshold that we have we use to uh, for a p value, right? And beta is for power, so one minus beta is equal to power of the study, right? So uh, use of statistical package. There are a lot of statistical package available uh, out there. 
such as uh, Excel, Statistica, SPSS, Minitab, S+, SAS, Data, BMDP, J JMP, Minitab, uh, MATLAB. So uh, this is uh, some example of programming. Uh, this uh, this is an example of uh, user interface uh, statistical package, is including Excel. So uh, for um, programming uh, language, we have Python, Java, Julia, Octave, uh, C++, R, Bugs, and Fortran. Uh, so basically, there are a lot more of statistical package available, but uh, we just need to understand one package. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, the purpose of doing of using statistical package is to make our our analysis easier, right? So we are not uh, we uh, normally people are using a space uh, a statistical package without knowledge. But uh, in fact, in reality, we need to understand the theoretical behind of uh, inferential or uh, descriptive statistics before we use a uh, statistical package. Because in statistical package, uh, there are term garbage in, garbage out. Means whatever you pump into the uh, statistical package, you will get the result. Uh, the result whether it's a good result or bad result depend on uh, whatever you pump into the statistical package right so statistical package are not magic it does it do not check the underlying assumption of method chosen and validity it do not correct or detect deficiencies uh, no interpretation is suggested uh, and the best and the, the the most important part is garbage in garbage out lah. Means that what you uh, whatever you pump in into the statistical package, you will get that uh, output. Right. So let's move to the tabular, graphical, and numerical descriptive description of data. So this is a display uh, data is display. Right. So in Statistical analysis. We before we start with uh, analysis or inferential statistics, uh, the first stage of uh, analysis is a data exploration, uh, exploratory data analysis. Means that we need to understand the nature and behavior of that data set. So there are many ways to do a data exploratory analysis. So first step. Uh, first, we can use a table, one way or two way cross tabulation table to explore the data, or we can use chart such as pie, bar, scatter, diagram, line chart, box plot, and stand and leaf, or we can use a summary statistics to measure the uh, to measure the central tendency and uh, measure of variability. And for a questionnaire uh, design. If you are using questionnaire as your instrument, data collection instrument, so uh, normally we are using factor analysis, but not limited to uh, questionnaire only. We uh, factor analysis is also applicable when we want to find a cluster of the item or the uh, or the uh, variables. Uh, factor analysis is to identify multi-dimensional construct from a group of variables. And we also have a variability test, reliability test. So the reliability test is to test the reliability of the construct or dimension. So graphical display of data. So we're going to look into these four type of display of data. So uh, we have single qualitative variable, single quantitative variable, display of va by varied variable, or display multi multiple variables so let's look at the first one for a single variable uh, this one not clear let me okay a graphical display for a single qualitative data right so we can use a pie chart to to display a single qualitative data it is suitable for a single categorical variable no comparison between group and not suitable where we you have more than uh, five 
more than five categories so if you have more than five categories then it is suggested to use a bar chart because it's easy to understand easy to uh, understand the uh, data by looking at the chart so this is a pie chart and this is a donut chart basically donut chart came from a pie chart we just double uh, make it a double pie chart and overlap the the second uh, chart into uh, the first uh, pie chart and make it smaller sikit and then you will dapat a pie a donut chart so Graphical display for qualitative data, pie chart suitable for single category, as I said before, no comparison be between group, not suitable where you have more than five categories. Right. So a bar chart is a single for, uh, is suitable for single or two category, categorical variable, right. can compare between groups. As if you compare to pie chart, we cannot do a comparison. So, but uh, for bar chart, we can do more than uh, more than one uh, categorical variable and limit to two categorical variable, and we can do a comparison between groups suitable where there are many category, right? If uh, many category. Uh, present so uh, this is a present the smoking data to uh, display a distribution of smoker by gender and uh, category of smoker this is one of the example so you can compare of smoker by designation and you can conclude right so this is example of uh, bar chart but this is an improper use of bar chart right because we have two uh we have basically we have um, we have a uh, year on x as is right so if you have year on x as is bar chart is not suitable for time related data right the time related data is suitable for a line chart so this is a one of the example uh, improper use of the bar chart right so if you look at the x as is we have time and you look at the legend we have area art science and technology this is good but x as is you are putting time on x as is so this is not a suitable chart to present time related data right <coughs> So another one is histogram so this is a uh, distribution of single quantitative variable right single quantitative variable you can use histogram but uh, do not confuse this plot with the bar chart because histogram is suitable for quantitative data but for bar chart is only suitable for qualitative data so single or two categorical variable right so this is a single quantitative variable the purpose of histogram is to is to show the normal distribution right so another chart um, that can use that can be used to uh, display by using quantitative variable right if you have or one quantitative variable or categorical variable right you can accept until one categorical variable right so uh, you can use a box plot so this is a box plot consists of the minimum value this is a quarter number one quarter number two quarter number three and this is a maximum value of the data so it presents the distribution of one quantitative variable by one or more categorical variable right so it also shows the minimum uh, maximum median quartal extreme value or the variation so the purpose of use uh, doing a, a box plot is to is the same as a histogram to see the distribution of the data whether it is a skewed distribution or normal distribution right 
so this is another uh, this is example of a uh, line chart right but this is a uh, improper use of line chart if you compare with the bar chart as i said before if you have a categorical variable it is suitable to use bar chart but if you are doing uh, with time related data so if you treating year as a categorical variable i think this is a wrong uh, description lah right year should be a continuous data a discrete continuous data right so it should be under line chart so line chart is only suitable for time related data so x as is for line chart should be time lah this is uh, basically this type of uh, data should be on bar chart or pie chart lah bar chart lah and this is should be bar chart so multiple bar chart is more appropriate for uh, this type of data lah so you can see more clearly a uh, clearer compared to uh, line chart right so there are if you have more than two uh, categories uh, or quant variable you want to display on the chart you can use three dimensional scatter plot but it is hard to 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 describe but we can see there is a uh, decreasing trend uh, for petal uh, length petal width and sepal length right so this is another is example of uh, three dimensional plot for response surface analysis so another plot that uh, very useful to present one categorical and two quantitative variable is a bubble plot so bubble plot is uh, nowadays is became uh, more popular right right uh, because you can, can by looking at the bubble plot we can get the first impression of the data right it will, will show the the big bubble will show the the large amount of the data <coughs> So, um, if uh, for descriptive statistics, there are, despite of uh, doing a chart, right, or graph, we can also use a frequency table to present the data, right? So, now, this is example of uh, correlation analysis. And this is an example of descriptive statistics. So can you detect error of the output table? So if you look at the descriptive statistics, so the variable involved is marital status sex. So marital status is a categorical data, right? So categorical data, as I said before, we cannot measure mean or standard deviation for categorical variable. It will never give a correct answer right for categorical variable you should only display it uh, using a frequency table right not with mean and standard deviation right and if you look at into correlation analysis as i said before for a categorical data you cannot use pearson chi squared a Pearson product moment correlation uh, but because Pearson product moment correlation only uh, suitable for continuous data right if you have a categorical data you should go for Pearson chi-square analysis or Fisher exact analysis so this is what I emphasized in the first uh, in the earlier slide right so be careful uh, on the type of analysis that you want to choose and make sure you know and identify the type of variable before you proceed with the statistical analysis right right let's look at a frequency table uh, frequency table the purpose of a frequency table is other than detecting error 
right discuss earlier frequency table present the percentage distribution by categories and of the qualitative data so if you are using spss this is the step of analyzing the data right so if you look at this uh, this is uh, the process in, or if you are using spss but i'm not going to emphasize here so this is example of frequency tab, uh, result so we have basically this is a, a secretaries we have 25 percent is 13 percent this is a total right All right, uh, just now we already look into uh, single qualitative data. Now let's let look at uh, displaying distribution of single quantitative variable, right? So if you are planning to display the data for a single quantitative variable, there are some uh, suggested plot that you can use such as the first one is stem and leaf plot stem and leaf plot box plot as I, as we discussed earlier normal probability plots and others plot uh, that are available such as histogram and so on All right so for stem and leaf plot let me use another color For stem and leaf plot is to display the distribution of single variable. We can also detect the outlier and we can see the skewness or the shape of distribution. Uh, the whether it is departure from a symmetrical uh, shape. Another one is a box plot uh, is to compare two or more distribution to detect outlier as well. You can use it to detect outlier and skewness. And normal probability plot, we can see the normality of the data, whether it's uh, under a straight line or not straight line. So uh, this is an example of a stem and leaf diagram, right? We can see the data is all, uh, a bit skewed to the right, right? So if the plot provide not only the distribution of data value, hence the variable, but also shows the actual value of observation and hence more informative than histogram lah. it also identify extreme value so if you can look here there is a same value out down here right so the next uh, plot is a uh, box plot so box plot or box or and whisker plot is the same thing provide median first quarter and third quarter as well as minimum and maximum value lah. so if you look at this one this is a minimum value first quarter second quarter which is median third quarter and the maximum value and this is the extreme or outlier right uh, can be detected on a box plot so if you look at here uh, this example of box plot we can detect the outlier on the top and the bottom of uh, the box plot so if you look at the box plot distribution it indicate the rest observation the observation are symmetrical uh, how do we de do we determine the symmetrical of the data uh, this data if you look at the box area on the right hand side and a uh, bottom side and up top side here uh, if it is uh, symmetrical as a same area right so it is a symmetrical lah. if the area on the left on the bottom side is larger it is a skew to uh, skew to the right so this is an example of uh, QQ plot so the QQ plot is uh, designed for a single quantitative variable right so if the variable is normally distributed the observation are distributed around the straight line straight line means the straight green line here yeah? so note the departure of straight line at both end for the average price so 
uh, normally when you use when you want to measure uh, normality of the data so you need to accompany uh, the 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 graphical display with uh, some diagnostic tests diagnostic tests such as Kamograph Simonov Lily 4 or Shipro wake statistics so normally uh, Shipro wake is more powerful compared to Kamograph uh, Simonov uh, uh, test so it proven under uh, many papers uh, literature so uh, in SPSS they are using uh, Lily 4 uh, uh, test Lily 4 test is a modification of Kamograph uh, Simonov test so if you are using uh, SPSS actually you are using a Lily 4 uh, Kamograph Simonov method right so illustration for box plot so example to generate a box plot to compare the beginning salary of diploma and degree graduate so this is a step for if you are using SPSS lah. Right, uh, let's move to the descriptive statistics. So, descriptive statistics is to describe the characteristic of your sample in a profile of respondent, uh, profile of your study area, or characteristic of the sample section. Uh, first, uh, in descriptive statistics, can be used also to check the data error. As I show you in the previous lecture, how we check the data error. And we also can use it to identify outlier in the data by using a box plot and frequency table. Also can you be used to identify the outliers. Uh, descriptive statistics also can be used to check any violation of the assumption underlying the statistical techniques considered and to address specific research question. So by using descriptive statistics, we can, you can do many things uh, on uh, by using statis descriptive statistics <coughs> so uh, this is a graph uh, this is a chart earlier that I showed to you earlier so we have uh, for descriptive statistics it depends on the type of measurement right for a type of measurement categorical data nominal and ordinal for nominal normally we are presenting the data in a frequency table proportion or modes it doesn't matter whether it's two categorical or more than two categories. Right? For ordinal scale, normally we are measuring median and mode. For the variability, we are measuring interquarter range. Right? For interval and ratio, usually we are measuring mean, arithmetic mean, variance, skewness, courtesies, and index number. Right? So uh <coughs> For categorical variable or descript uh, descriptive for categorical variable or qualitative variables, right? So normally we can use a frequency or percentage. Mode mode is the most frequent response, the response with the highest frequency, useful for nominal variable, right? Nominal scale of variable. Median is a value where 50 percent of the sample choose or take at most uh, that the uh, uh, take at most or at least that value useful for ordinal measurement or and above Me and above means that uh, at least ordinal interval or ratio right percentage above percentage below, below a particular value is indicates the position of the value with respect to other response percentile is a p percentile of the variable is the value where the p percentage of the sample chosen or taken that value right so it's also useful for ordinal measurement a scale of measurement or above right so this is how we determine the percentile, uh, median, mode uh, from a SPSS, right? So this is example of median and mode, percentile, 80 percentile, 
and 5% tall. Uh, this is a frequency table, right? Uh, so now, descriptive statistic for categorical variable refer to the airport survey data. So this is, um, uh, if you uh, let's say uh, later on, I will give you the data, so you will explore by yourself by doing descriptive statistics. Most respond respondent rated the airport as very good mode is equal to 4 so only 5% rated the airport as fair to poor or poor 5 percent right 50 percent of the overall rating of very good or excellent median so we're going to use median right <coughs> so now um, just now we are looking into the descriptive statistic for qualitative variable now now is a descriptive statistic for quantitative variable for quantitative variable normally we are using central of tendency and central of a measure of central tendency and measure of uh, dispersion or uh, and variation right so measure of central tendency a measure or to represent uh, the average of the whole population or distribution mean is a numeric variable uh, mean is calculated from a numeric variables right with a symmetric uh, distribution right for median uh, is calculated for at least ordinal variable and numeric variable with a skewed distribution so this is a, a guideline right so mean we are calculating mean for numeric variable for with symmetric distribution mean means that uh, when you have a normal distributed data so then you can calculate mean if you have a skewed data then or you have a ordinal variable so you can use median to calculate the central ten measure of central tendency it is more robust compared to mean because mean is sensitive to the extreme value median is not sensitive with the extreme value mode is the most frequent value not as useful as uh, for nominal and ordinal so uh, normally we use mode for nominal scale and uh, and sometimes we use mode for uh, ordinal scale as well but uh, for geometric mean uh for variable measure on a logarithmic scale right so you're going to use a geometric mean so harmonic means uh we use harmonic mean to find average rate right when you are having a rate a data so then you can use harmonic mean so for example what is the average speed of a car traveling at speed different speed over distant k kilometers so this is uh, we're going to use harmonic mean instead of arithmetic mean <clears throat> so this is a formula for calculating uh, median and this is uh, n right so descriptive statistic for quantitative variable measure or spread and variability right so just now we are looking into measure of central tendency so now is measure of spread of variability and variability so the range is the difference between the lowest and highest or just state or uh, the minimum and maximum values right means that we take a difference between maximum and the max and the minimum values Standard deviation is describe the observation cluster around the mean means that we are going to take a mean around the difference between the observation and mean. The coefficient of variation means that we are going to measure relative spread of data. Right? When you want to compare between uh, distribution 1 and distribution 2, so normally we are going to use a coefficient of variation. So the formula for coefficient of variation is S divided by mean. Means standard deviation divided by mean multiplied with 100%. So normally coefficient of variation is uh, expressed in a percentage value. Lah. Percentile, a uh, value that divide 
the order data into group right so if you are measuring quartal so we are dividing the data into four parts four groups if you are measuring percentile we are measure, we are dividing data into 100 parts right so in quartal we have first quartal which is a 25 percentile uh, 50 uh, percentile which is a second quartal and the third quartal is 75 percentile right <clears throat> so this is how we find uh, qu uh, descriptive statistics for uh, using SPSS right so I think um, I think that's all uh, for the next lecture we will continue on inferential statistics because inferential statistics is a very big topic so uh, we will discuss on the next lecture for today lecture just uh, make sure you understand uh, the role of statistics for research in research methodology and what is uh, best suitable what is a suitable data type uh, what is a suitable uh, uh, graph or chart for uh, variable if you have a, a categorical variable what are the suitable chart if you have a continuous variable what are the suitable chart and descriptive statistics uh, you should now know uh, the difference between uh, the type of uh, descriptive statistics for different type of scale of measurement right so i think that's all uh, until now uh, see you on the next class on uh, inferential statistics uh, for a bit uh, um, introduction on the next class inferential statistics we're going to learn a lot uh, maybe uh, in variance in analysis of variance correlation and linear regression other predictive modeling and analysis of categorical data All right so that sub that's it uh, for introduction for the next class uh, so till then uh, see you next week uh, thank you very much assalamualaikum